Chairman Dent, Ranking Member Wasserman Schultz, distinguished members of this committee, thank you for the opportunity to update you on the quality of life of our soldiers and our Army. Today I am joined by my wife, Holly, but I'm also joined by the rest of the Army team. Command Sergeant Major Chris Kepner of the Army National Guard is here, and a representative of the Army Reserve, a proud representative of the entire Army, is our NC over the year, Sergeant First Class Moeller. And on behalf of over one million soldiers and their families, we would like to thank this committee for the work you have done to ensure that they have the necessary resources to fight and win. We ask that Congress continues to make military readiness a top priority as they did last year with the National Defense Authorization Act. Not only did you address readiness with the end strength, but you restored support for our soldiers and families by authorizing their largest pay raise in five years. The last time I testified before this committee, our Army was well underway with four structure cuts, but today we're growing increasing by an additional 28,000 soldiers across three components does present a challenge, but rest assured, it will be accomplished without degradation of readiness. After visiting and talking with thousands of soldiers and families over the past year, I believe their quality of life is okay. If we want to continue to retain and attract quality people under the current and strength of our all-volunteer force, we must continue sustainment efforts as was the case in last year's Congress. Everywhere I visit, I'm inspired by the resiliency of soldiers and their families. The things we ask of them, however, is not commensurate with the quality of life that they have been given. Frankly, it never will be. But we can certainly provide better than we do right now. The long-term impact is what is concerning. If we continue to be placed in positions where we must choose benefits or training, we will certainly lose out on quality and talent down the road. Fiscal uncertainty will result in loss of confidence in our institution and ultimately degrade our ability to retain and recruit. This includes appropriations for equipment, training, and manpower, but also includes a consistent, predictable budget that supports benefits and services throughout the entire soldier life cycle, recruit, retain, transition, and veteran status. The impact extends beyond our current force and continues to reap benefits when soldiers transition out of the Army and into civilian life. Veterans influence the people in our communities, that influence shapes perceptions and confidence, which undoubtedly affects the quality of recruits we receive and the talent we are able to retain. Our latest attempt at education reform in our Army is credentialing assistance. I'm asking you for your help in this effort because it impacts every aspect of the soldier life cycle and our society, not just the military. For years, we have providing our soldiers with world-class training and education, much of which already directly translates to civilian occupations. And by providing our soldiers with access to additional and self-directed credentialing and certification opportunities while in service, we can help fill the gaps that exist in our nation's workforce, bring more contributing members of society into your districts, and put veterans to work. Our soldiers have engaged in combat operations for over 15 consecutive years, yet public perception often is that we are not a nation at war. With more than 180,000 soldiers in 140 countries, preventing, shaping, and winning for our nation, our soldiers are in high demand. This is why our number one priority has and always will continue to be readiness. We know very well what is expected of our Army. We will maintain professionals who are accountable and respectable. Initiatives and policies such as Not My Squad, Sexual Assault Prevention, Gender Integration, and Religious Accommodations are just some of the examples of how we will affect appropriate change in our military culture. Filling Army formations with soldiers of character, competence, and commitment Soldiers who are mentally, emotionally, and physically fit to withstand the rigors required of members of the professions of arms is not a responsibility that I, the Chief, or the Secretary take lightly. If we are to maintain an all-quality volunteer force, we must focus on sustainment of the force we have right now. In current levels of compensation, benefits, and operational tempo, it's what soldiers today have come to expect. What we have to do now is focus on sustainment and to avoid policies that degrade that readiness. Having a military is a requirement for the nation, but it is a choice by individuals. Therefore, we must ensure our actions and decisions reinforce the message that we are behind our professional all-volunteer force. These actions and decisions must always reinforce the message that we will support our soldiers and families at work and home. I am confident with the help of Congress, our Army will always be ready to assure, deter, and defend the American people and our way of life. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions.